your city Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country song We'll all be flying higher than a jetliner And if you want a little bang in your yin-yang, come along the special counsel confirmed that the Russian government sponsored efforts to illegally interfere with the 2016 presidential election, but did not find that the Trump campaign or other Americans colluded in those efforts. I'm having a good day, too. It was called No Collusion, No Obstruction. <laughs> there never was, by the way, and there never will be. Freedom is back in style. Welcome to the revolution. Yeah, we're coming to your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country song. Sean Hannity. The new, the new Sean Hannity Show. More behind-the-scenes information on breaking news. And more bold, inspired solutions for America. What do you think is a story that's been uncovered in the past two years? That the entire Russia collusion narrative was made up, that the FBI and the intelligence community and the Department of Justice began an investigation against four American citizens simply because they worked for the opposition political candidate, that being Donald Trump. She is taking the FBI to task for having given unlimited unsupervised access to raw intelligence. What do you look at in Google? Uh, telephone information, calls, texts, you name it. Everything, every nightmare everybody has of information being collected by Big Brother. The FBI gave three private contractors unlimited, unsupervised access to that. All right, that was Sidney Powell uh, on a radio show in New York and also on Cheryl Atkinson's. Uh, she has her Sunday show called Full Measure. Uh, Sidney Powell is the author of the number one runaway bestseller, License to Lie, as you just heard. And it exposes corruption in the Department of Justice and to also senior policy advisor for America First. Peter Schweitzer joins us. Remember, when he wrote his book, Compromised, and... He, he talked about James Comey. We're going to get into how did Comey's net worth skyrocket so much? What is his connection to Mueller? Uh, what do they have with Uranium One? And we welcome you both. Hour two, Sean Hannity Show. Thank you both for being with us. You know, Sydney, I'm listening very closely to what you're saying. I, I'm going to ask you a two-part question. Where are the FISA judges? When do we ever get to hear from them because one thing i've learned in my life about judges they don't like being lied to and obviously a a fraud on a spectacular level was perpetrated on them when the bulk of the information presented to them was the hillary clinton bought and paid for russian dossier that they swear when they presented to the judges has been verified they purposely didn't expose Hillary as having paid for the document, just a slight asterisk. It might have a political taint. Um, what do you think those FISA judges are thinking today? They should be absolutely outraged, Sean. I mean, if I were one, I would have already had everyone who signed the applications in front of me and under an order to show cause why they shouldn't be held in contempt. But I imagine they are awaiting the report of the inspector general on the FISA abuses. That's the only reason I can think of that they have been completely silent. Now, these judges are picked in secret by the chief justice. In this case, it would be John Roberts. And they serve varying amounts of time in terms of their term. And there are a number of them, correct? That's correct. And so would it be something that they would be able to follow up on if it's discovered and which it will be that they were that a fraud was perpetrated on them? In other words, we now know that the the bulk of information used in the applications for FISA were based on Hillary's bought and paid for Russian dossier. And the reason it's unverifiable is its author, Christopher Steele, under oath in that interrogatory in Great Britain, says he doesn't even believe his own dossier, has no idea if it's true at all, maybe 50-50, and that it was just raw intelligence. And that's what they signed and off I, on. I also think Nellie Orr and Glenn Simpson wrote about as much of it as Christopher Steele did, if Christopher Steele actually wrote any of it. Yeah, well, that's pretty unbelievable. All right, Peter Schweitzer, great to have you back. Um, and your book, Compromised, 
has done extraordinarily well. And you give a lot of detail about James Comey that we never knew before, like his net worth skyrocketed over 4,000 percent when he left the DOJ in 2005, returned to the FBI in 2013. Um, he made six point one million dollars after Mueller's FBI after Mueller's FBI granted his employer, Lockheed Martin, the largest contract in history. Quote, you call it a billion dollar boondoggle. I'm not against former law enforcement starting businesses and making money. But the connection to Mueller goes even deeper than that. Why don't you explain? Yeah, Sean. Um, I mean, I think that's what a lot of people have to realize is that we, we have to look at uh institutions like the intelligence community, the way that we look at other government agencies, there's revolving doors, they have incentives uh, to help their friends. Uh, in the case of uh, Comey and Mueller, they have a relationship that goes back 25 years, uh, and they've always sort of functioned as a tag team. And so when you have a circumstance where uh, Bob Mueller is put in charge of an investigation that James Comey, his good friend, uh, certainly has a personal interest and stake in, it, it creates enormous problem. Uh, but add on top of that layer, Sean, the fact that, you know, when you look at the Mueller report, the interesting thing that stands out to me, uh, there are a number of things, but, but part of it is when we look at the subject of foreign interference, uh, the foreign interference that stands out to me is how much of MI6 has fingerprints on this, um, whether it's Christopher Steele, whether it's some of the stuff that was done to... Uh, uh, you know, some of the lower-level Trump campaign uh, volunteers. Um, it, it speaks to the problem that when you have an intelligence community, it's a community. And Bob Mueller and James Comey have long, deep, established relationships with people in intelligence, which is fine. But when that spills over into interfering in a, a presidency and a presidential election, you have a huge problem. And that's what I think is the big overlooked story uh, in addition to all the other headlines that we can glean from the uh, Mueller report. What you're really saying is, and this now is coming up more and more and more, especially, and we'll have John Solomon coming up at the bottom of the hour, but there is more and more evidence that I'm hearing a lot more chatter from my sources that the official start date of this Russia witch hunt was not July 31st. It was not based on Papadopoulos, who was being spied upon and tasked to spy on Papadopoulos and Carter Page and Sam Clovis, that it started well before that, probably in February of the same year of 2016, and that some of this might be related to some of our allies and outsourcing of intelligence methods. In other words, using methods that would be illegal for our intelligence officials to use. Again, I want to put this caveat in, though. You know, we have the premier law enforcement agency known as the FBI in the entire world, 99.9%. The same with our intelligence agents. 99.9% uh, .9 would never abuse the powerful tools that we give them. We're talking about the, that tiny one-tenth of one percent, the upper echelon that abused their power here, but did they outsource to foreign countries or task our allies with doing things for them that they knew they couldn't do because it's illegal here? In other words, spy on Americans. No, I think you're I'm right, pretty Sean. sure the answer to that's yes, but I think your percentage is a little bit high, Sean. I think we've got probably a 20 percent problem in a lot of the agencies. Well, that scares me, because if you're talking about the tools of intelligence, it was Chuck Schumer who probably infamously, famously said that, you know, you screw with the intelligence committee, they're going to get you 10 ways on Sunday. Right. Well, I, I mean, what do you think the percentage is, Peter Schweitzer? Uh, I think it's, it's, yeah, it's probably 15 to 20 percent. I think it's highly concentrated among those that work out of FBI headquarters in Washington, D.C. I mean, you hear this time and time again, people that work at the Bureau, uh, they've done great work in the field. They move to headquarters and it becomes much more political. But I think to your larger point, Sean, you're absolutely right. I mean, this is a story of outsourcing uh, and trying to gin up an investigation without having your fingerprints on it. I mean, you know, look, if you and I uh, lie to the FBI, we all know that that's a crime. If we file a false police report, we claim our neighbor did something nefarious that they didn't do. That's a criminal offense. Well, what essentially Unless you're the Jesse Smollett. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, you know, but if, if you look at if you look at what happened in the case of the dossier, the Clintons essentially paid a guy to do that.
um, and try to avoid having their fingerprints on it. And I think that's why what the Attorney General has said is so important is we need to investigate uh, the investigation. We need to look at the headwaters of all of this and see how did this happen because it's had a dramatically, uh, uh, you know, troubling effect on our politics, on this administration. Uh, and if you don't deal with this, this is going to become standard operating procedure in American politics. And I don't think anybody wants that. So then let me go and back we need to, to know who the private contractors are that Comey gave that illegal access to to the raw FISA, the raw NSA database. That's crucial. One of them's got to be Fusion GPS. There are a lot of indicators for that. One of them may very well be CrowdStrike, the group that also gave the, you know, reviewed the DNC server and is heavily Clinton connected. Sydney, let me go back to the Mueller report from yesterday. Usually, if a prosecutor or, in this case, a special counsel, if they can't indict, the details of what they may have found, et cetera, et cetera, never come out. But that, I think Robert Mueller, because look at the team around him, I think you're the, the world's biggest critic, and I'm probably number two, of Andrew Weissman, Jeannie Ray, and this merry band of Democratic donors, uh, and only Democratic donors that, that Mueller surrounded himself with, uh, which was fundamentally unfair in the in the first place so we have a definitive statement no collusion got it but he leaves open we're we're not saying we're not clearing him we're not making a determination of any kind but he really should have and by not doing it he is sort of left the door open that to me was all political because when rod rosenstein and the office of legal counsel and the attorney general all at once in about 30 seconds after reading the report say it does not rise to the level of any type of indictment it, then Mueller did all of that. And by the way, all the things he listed were stupid. You agree? Totally. This is, yeah, this is textbook Andrew Weissman smear tactic and throwing red meat to the Democrats to fuel their resistance and impeachment efforts or whatever trouble they want to cause for the next 18 months. That's absolutely all it is. Let me, Remember, let me pick it up Weissman right there. Yeah, I want to pick it up there. I mean, if it doesn't rise to the level of an indictable offense, then it, this information is meaningless. We'll get to that more with uh, Sidney Powell, Peter Schweitzer on the other side, uh, John Solomon at the bottom of the hour. Uh, oh, and then Geraldo's, uh, he's wondering if any Democratic candidates are going to apologize to Donald Trump. That'll be fun. Him and Dan Bongino. All coming up, Friday edition, Sean Hannity Show. Straight ahead. <laughs> As we continue, Sidney Powell, author of License to Lie, Peter Schweitzer, uh, author of the book Compromised. Uh, thank you both for being with us. I want to go back, Sidney, to the, the second part of the Mueller report. He doesn't make a determination, just lays out the facts. Basically, all he's saying is Donald Trump publicly talked about firing Mueller, Rosenstein, Jeff Sessions, and, and he hoped and was, was praying that, that General Flynn didn't get in a lot of trouble. Okay, that's called freedom of speech. He didn't do or act any way on any of these issues, uh, just like the deep state officials that were talking about secretly taping the president or invoking the 25th Amendment. They only talked about it. They didn't do it. So it's not a crime. It's not obstruction. Hillary Clinton's case was obstruction with real intent with an underlying real crime. So Mueller put it in there. Why? To throw red meat to the Democrats. It's Mr. Weissman's report. I call it the Weissman report, not the Mueller report. I guarantee you Mr. Mueller didn't write this. I'd be surprised if he even read the whole thing. Maybe he edited a word here and there, but this is textbook Andrew Weissman. It's a smear campaign. It's throwing red meat to the Democrats to fuel the resistance and whatever impeachment and other havoc they want to wreck for the next 18 months to continue the harassment of the president. That's absolutely all it is. There isn't a single case or statute in the obstruction section would warrant an obstruction prosecution. In fact, on page nine, I think it is, they even flag it as potentially relevant obstruction statute. That is a huge red flag right there that they have absolutely that's nothing a great. That's involved. a great catch. I actually picked up on that as I was reading it. I actually read through the whole thing, believe it or not. There has to be an underlying crime and there has to be intent. Hillary did violate the Espionage Act. It is irrefutable. The evidence is overwhelming and incontrovertible and we know that that investigation was rigged. 
We know the intent when she deleted the subpoenaed emails and cleaned up the hard drive with bleach pit and busted up the devices was to destroy evidence in that case. That is your former prosecutor. Is not a, that a slam dunk, dunk obstruction case? Yes. One of the stunning things about the report is the obstruction of justice legal analysis. If only anything like that had been applied to Hillary Clinton's concrete actions in destroying her Blackberries, having her hard drive bleach fitted and bleach completely fitted, yeah. wiped yeah, completely wiped out and destroying all the emails after they'd been subpoenaed, all of that all of that conduct was actual obstruction of justice and destruction of evidence. Nothing they talk about in the report as a respecting no, President Trump just the opposite. was obstruction in any way, shape, or form. Last word, Peter Schweitzer. Look, um, all that they're left with after all the claims at the beginning of 2017 that there was massive collusion and cooperation, we're left now with them essentially saying that there were some meetings and there was some contact. Uh, between uh, Trump campaign officials and Russians. If that is where it's left, uh, the Clinton team has far deeper ties, far closer relationships with those same Russian entities. And I think Sidney talked about it earlier. Um, it's really the double standard that everybody is fed up with. If you want to have a consistent standard, a hard standard, apply it to Trump, apply it to Clinton, that's great, that's fine, I think that's a good thing. But that's not what's happening, and that's why people look at this right. and believe the process has a lot Exit of Exit question. Yes or no answer. Will people be indicted, Sydney? Yes. Peter? Yes. Three yeses. All right. Thank you both. Peter Schweitzer, Sydney Powell, we appreciate your insight as always. When we come back, John Solomon, well, he's breaking big news next week. He'll give us a preview. Then Geraldo is asking for Democratic candidates which one is going to apologize to Donald Trump, don't hold your breath. Uh, he and Dan Bongino will join us. We'll get to your calls as well. 800 941 Sean on this Friday. Are you looking for a radio station near you that runs Sean Hannity? Well, you can locate it on our affiliate finder at Hannity.com. NBC News Radio. I'm Tom Roberts. The East Coast is under the gun today for heavy rain, high winds, and possible tornadoes. Forecasters say the risk of heavy thunderstorms extends from Florida to Pennsylvania and New Jersey through tonight. At least three deaths are blamed on the storm system that swept through the deep south, spawning tornadoes and torrential rainfall. Life sentences are being given to the Southern California couple who tortured and abused 12 of their 13 children. David and Louise Turpin both pleaded guilty in February to numerous felony charges, including dependent adult abuse and child endangerment. Janet LaTourette is an attorney who read one of the victim's stories in court today. I remember our mother sitting in her recliner and crying, saying she don't know what to do. She didn't want to use rope or chain but she was afraid her children were taking in too much sugar and caffeine. The Turpins will be eligible for parole in 25 years. High-profile Democrat Joe Biden may be just days away from announcing his campaign for the White House. NBC political reporter Mike Memoli. Advisors to the former vice president confirmed to NBC News that he is, they're putting the final pieces together for an announcement of his candidacy next week. Multiple sources say Biden will enter the race via a video announcement. The House Judiciary Committee is following through with its pledge to subpoena the Justice Department for a full unredacted Mueller report. MSNBC legal analyst Glenn Kirshner says it's unclear if Attorney General Bill Barr will comply, but he thinks at some point at least some top congressional leaders will get to see it. I do think one way or another the full report is going to go to Congress, maybe first to a select group with security clearances so they can see everything. Barr has agreed to appear before House and Senate Judiciary panels early next month. Today is one of the holiest days of the year for two religions. Christians are marking Good Friday and Jews are observing Passover. You're listening to the latest from NBC News Radio. What a who? Let's find out to see Cardi B. You know where Robert I'm Cardi B you know in court on Friday. The 26 year old Bronx native dressed in all white and carrying a $15,000 Birkin handbag to match made a brief appearance inside Queens Criminal Court. She rejected a plea offer to resolve her assault case stemming from a strip club fight in Queens last summer. Her next court date is set for May 31st. You like my hair? Gee, thanks. Just it. I see it. I like it. 
morning. Ariana Grande is heading back to California for weekend two of Coachella. She's closing out the festival on Sunday night. There are also performances by Childish Gambino, Janelle Monet, Billie Eilish, and dozens of other artists. Some sets will be live streamed on YouTube. We love the earth. Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, Miley Cyrus are in animal form in a new music video from rapper Little Dicky. He dropped a song titled Earth and a music video to go along. In the animated visual, multiple celebrities voice different animals while Little Dicky sings about loving planet Earth. Harry Styles is showing his support for Blackpink. He attended the Korean Girl Group's concert at the Forum in Los Angeles on Wednesday night. That's entertainment. Lisa G, NBC News Radio. iHeartRadio is now the number one podcaster in the country, and we'd like to say thanks. Thanks for downloading and listening to some of our 25,000 hit podcasts, and thanks for letting us introduce you to some of our favorites, like Disgraceland, the Ron Burgundy podcast, and Anna Ferris is Unqualified podcast. We know we have the podcasts you love, so find yours now on the iHeartRadio app. Oh, and listening is always free, even if you want to download them to your phone so you can listen later. Your music, your stations, and number one for podcasts. iHeartRadio. Sean Hannity on iHeartRadio. Investigating the stories that matter to you. Sean Hannity is on right now. Do you feel like this public-facing document by Robert Mueller in his office today correctly and aptly explains why those investigations were started um, and, and whether the predicate was sound? I think it does. I think it validates the decisions that we made, uh, certainly in July of 2016, to start the initial uh, Russia-focused investigation. And then, of course, the decisions that we made in May of 2017 to include the president uh, in in that investigation personally. Um, As you know, Rachel, the FBI, uh, the standard for predication to open an investigation in the FBI is an articulable, factual basis to believe that a threat to national security might exist exist Mm -hmm. or that a federal crime might have been committed. We have been saying as much as we can publicly in the last few months that those are the reasons, looking at the facts that we had before us, that we opened the case uh, on on, uh, President Trump in May of 2017. The Mueller report today, this redacted version of the report that we got, essentially tries to address the controversy a little bit Mm -hmm. over what it would take to get a FISA warrant on somebody for which you have to prove to the court that somebody may be acting as a foreign agent. That's right. um, Versus no prosecutorial decision to charge that person as a foreign agent. Tell us about that distinction. Sure. So the standard is the FISA, you have to prove to the FISA court that the uh, to a not a preponderance of evidence. I see this essentially as a roadmap for prosecutors after the president has left office or for the Judiciary Committee while the president is still in office to essentially pursue those charges in a trial after he's no longer president or in impeachment proceedings while he's in Congress. I think otherwise you wouldn't go to the lengths that they go to in order to explain the president's state of mind. Is that how you read it? It's absolutely how I read it. You know, the Bob Mueller that I know, the Bob Mueller that I worked for for many years is not a guy who's going to write a report that contradicts existing DOJ policy. So he's not going to write a report that says the president should be indicted, knowing that that's not a possibility under the current policy. But what 
Director Mueller has done here is he's provided an avalanche of facts that clearly indicate obstructive activity on the part of the president. He calls it out plainly in 10 different sections in that volume two of the report. And he lays out why he believes in many of those cases the intent is present, uh, why he believes that the, you know, the nexus to the contemplated or ongoing uh, matter is present. So the analysis is extraordinary. The scope is incredibly damning for the president. And nothing you just heard from former FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe is accurate. It's not accurate on the law. It's not the interpretation of what the special counsel said and did. Uh, yeah, it was a political document. Sure. Did he point uh, out? Well, Congress, you can take this and run with it if you want. And by the way, good luck to anybody that thinks that um, missing the fundamental issues. No Russia collusion at all. And for a guy that is under his own criminal investigation here and likely up to his eyeballs in more legal trouble to make those comments And for him to make those suggestions, all it does is reaffirm everything that we have known and know about the deep state. Remember, he was there when all the talk about, oh, let's secretly spy on the president. Let's invoke the 25th Amendment. It was the deputy director at the time, Andrew McCabe, that allowed the FISA warrant to be based on unverified, uncorroborated uh, Hillary bought and paid for Russian lies because of his and others disdain for all things Trump. And remember when Page and Strzok were texting back and forth and they're talking about Andy and they're talking about the insurance policy. That's the same Andy on the media side of it. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, this uh, hope we might be able to re- resuscitate, re- resuscitate this It's not going to work. And the avalanche we've been talking about is coming. John Solomon next week is going to break huge news as he has since March of 2017 when this all began for us. Uh, He joins us now. He's the executive director of The Hill, investigative reporter. And uh, John, uh, is there anything I just said about my analysis about McCabe that's wrong? No, you know, it's it's fascinating to me as you've watched the last two months as Democrats have tried to sustain the now disproven collusion narrative. They've had to turn to less and less credible people. Who did the Democrats call as their first witness when they had their first hearing on Trump? They called a convicted liar, Michael Cohen. And what did he do? He gave more inaccurate testimony. Last night, what did the, the networks that have tried to sustain a false narrative do? They turned to Andrew McCabe, a now confirmed liar who is facing prosecution for that lie. And the reason they have to turn to people like that is that credible people who now know the facts can't say what they want to have on their network. And I think it's a shame for journalism that what we're getting on these television networks is less factual and more propaganda uh, at a time when this country deserves the facts. The facts are... Uh, Director Mueller, Special Prosecutor Mueller, said no American, read that, no American colluded with Russia on their campaign to disrupt the election. That is a fact. It is now not in dispute. And anything Andrew McCabe says can't undercut that finding. So I think we're in a period now where we're actually in fantasy land. Responsible networks should acknowledge where the factual uh, case stands and start embracing it and explaining it to the American people. There are lots of important issues to be resolved, but pretending there's still a collusion fantasy is not doing anyone any good. Well, I don't think they can let it go. I think it is that ingrained. And it's really now a psychosis that exists. And it's so fascinating because they they just want to double down. But what they're going to end up doing is just, you know, slowly, gradually moving on to, oh, maybe the memorandum of understanding between Cummings and Maxine Waters and the cowardly Schiff, Adam Schiff. Because one way or another, they're not going to govern the country. They're just going to try and destroy this man as they have from day one. The fact that it's so clear that there was no collusion from the beginning, even the items that are mentioned uh, in the second part of Mueller's report. OK, yeah, he said publicly, maybe I should fire Mueller and Rosenstein right. and and Sessions. And he 
didn't hide any of his comments. He had every right to fire Comey. Why that was even brought up is absurd to me. Comey, in his own words, said he could be fired for any reason or no reason at all. Or the idea, well, Don McGahn, he wants to be the hero in all this, and he saved the president from firing uh, Mueller, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, uh, no, you didn't, because if the president wanted to do it, he would have done it. And knowing yeah, Donald Trump as well as I do, he was venting. He was sick of it because he was an innocent man for two and a half years being persecuted unjustly and was pissed off, rightly so, and screaming it at the top of his lungs, which I can't blame yeah. him for. When I, when I wrote my column yesterday, what I said is the Democrats are trying to take the actions of an innocent man, trying to defend himself against false allegations and make it look like obstructive behavior. You have a right to defend yourself. If you see people that are uh, conspiring to make a false allegation against you, we do this. We're allowed, uh, when we face a criminal trial, to knock jurors out of voir dire because we don't think they're going to be fair to us. What you see in Donald Trump is that when he's thinking about Mueller, he's like, I don't think he could be fair to me. He just hired 17 Democrats. At the same time, were some of his comments intemperate? Sure. Will he learn from some of these things, perhaps? But at the end of the day, to build an obstruction case on what, when there is no crime, he wasn't obstructing a legitimate criminal investigation. There was no crime. And what he was really doing was trying to defend his presidency and himself from what he ultimately turned out to be truthfully saying, which was there was no collusion. It's, it's really remarkable. I wrote a whole column on it yesterday, and lots of people have commented on it, because when you look at it from the different perspective, would a man obstructing an investigation open up all of his files, all of his files, his attorney-client privilege files, his executive privilege covered files, and cooperate if he was trying to obstruct? Why didn't he just shut the investigation down? He could have just done that. It was in his power. There's just a lot of things about the obstruction narrative that are absurd when you step back and you take a look at the big picture. I have given my list of things that are coming because this story is hardly over. While yeah. the collusion delusion media will remain focused on their phony narrative and never retract, apologize, correct, nor will they pay attention to what is the biggest abuse of power in our country's history. And next week it is going to get dramatically worse for them to the extent that it's possible. Can you give a preview? Sure. Listen, I'm going to talk about a couple of things that I think are going to become new um, uh, new points of discussion, investigation, and concern. One of those is when you read the entire Mueller report, there is a theory that I think uh, I saw Devin Nunez first mention on your show a few weeks ago and that I've been hearing from intelligence professionals, career intelligence professionals, for several weeks. And that is it is highly likely that, that these contacts, like the Trump Tower and the uh, former Russian intelligence agent that just happens to feed Steele all of his bogus information that we now know has been disproven in the Steele dossier, they may have been known or they may have been what is known in the spy tradecraft as discoverable operations. So instead of a, a secret effort by Russia to influence the election, they used overt people. What do I mean by that? When you interview a, a former intelligence officer uh, of Russia inside the United States, everybody in the United States knows he's tied to Russian intelligence. That's not good spy tradecraft if you're trying to keep it secret. When you want to keep it secret, you do what you did with Robert Hansen for 20 years, where Moscow used cloak and dagger, dagger tactics to keep his work secret as a spy. It was overt. The same thing. If you're going to set up a secret meeting to coordinate with Donald Trump at the Trump Tower, would you really send a Russian lawyer who's in on the country only because she got a special parole visa declaring she's a Russian government asset to come into the United States? You, that would be the last person you would use for a secret campaign. So some of these intelligence people are beginning to reassess the original idea that maybe this is all about helping Hillary lose and Donald Trump win to maybe they were trying to destroy both candidates. And the effort on Trump is a very different type of intelligence effort. It's known as discoverable intelligence operations designed to create doubt in the mind of Americans. And if that's the case, Robert Mueller's report just help Vladimir Putin extend the doubt outward for months more. We'll be debating this just like Vladimir Putin wanted, probably when he sent that woman to the Trump Tower and sent that person to uh, Christopher Steele to dump all that bogus dossier. I got to take a break. When we come back, there is a likelihood this all started way before the official start date based on Papadopoulos having a drink with Stefan Halper, correct? That's correct. I'd be Stay glad right to talk there. about that. All right. I want to talk about that more. John Solomon. One of our, you know, look, there's an ensemble cast here. They've worked so hard these two years. And John at the top of the list, uh, along with so many others.
All right, as we continue, John Solomon, executive director at The Hill, investigative reporter. He's been in the forefront of our ensemble cast exposing uh, the deep state, which 99.9% of the media in this country, they just were selling you lies and conspiracy theories for over two years. All right, so there's two things that you're working on. One is Ukraine officials are now admitting that they interfered in our 2016 election and they want to give us the evidence. They're willing. That's correct. Okay. And it's real evidence. And then we have on they the other it. side of this, we are all beginning to believe that all of this Trump Russia collusion stuff didn't start July 31st of 2016, as we've been told, way before that, maybe as far back as February or March of that year. Yeah, I think that's right, Sean. And next week, I think I'll be able to get some new information out that will really enlighten the timeline. And I think there's another element of it, too. The Obama White House has been remarkably missing from the um, the entire timeline and, quite frankly, the entire discussion for the last two and a half years. But there's one text message over and over again that plays in my head, and that is Pete Stroke coming out of a meeting in August of 2016. It was a multi-agency coordination meeting on the Russia investigation saying, and, and the text message quoting someone else from the meeting says, the White House is running this. We've not figured out what did that mean and when did that start and who knew what. I believe we'll be able to show that in December 2015, a Justice Department official and an and a undercover operative began conversations with an eye towards Ukraine. In January or February 16, Ukraine and U.S. authorities had a very sensitive discussion about something that ultimately became the Paul Manafort Russia collusion investigation. And by March and April, the efforts had expanded beyond White House, Justice Department, informant, to the DNC, the Hillary Clinton campaign. And all of these people have the same objective. We are going to try to show Paul Manafort and Donald Trump are agents of Russia. Well, we found out yesterday Donald Trump was never an agent of Russia. But who and why and how many people participated in it? And think definitely we'll next shot. week we're going to get a lot more on this, right? Yeah, that's right. right. And, and for weeks to come. I think it's a long process. And we're going to hold them all accountable. we only just beginning, and I keep telling people that there's so much that is coming, it is going to blow the country away, I think. But at the end of this, we – and if we don't fix it, we, we lose the country. It's that serious. Great work, John Solomon, once again. Thanks, sir. 800-941-SEAN. Uh, Dan Bongino, Geraldo, News Roundup, Information Overload. Geraldo tweeting out, I wonder if any of the Democratic candidates will be man or woman enough to apologize for his or her party slandering at real Donald Trump as a traitor since July of 2016. Don't hold your breath. We'll ask Geraldo next. To your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country song. We'll all be flying higher than a jetliner. And if you want a little bang in your yin yang, come along. The special counsel confirmed that the Russian government sponsored efforts to illegally interfere with the 2016 presidential election, but did not find that the Trump campaign or other Americans colluded in those efforts. I'm having a good day, too. It was called No Collusion, No Obstruction. There never was, by the way, and there never will be. Freedom is back in style. Welcome to the revolution. Yeah, we're coming to your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country song. Sean Hannity. The new, the new Sean Hannity Show. More behind-the-scenes information on breaking news. And more bold, inspired solutions for America. Coming up next, our final news roundup and information overload hour. Luckily, this president has a pliant attorney general. Clearly, and, and a very amped up, jacked up message operation. Sean Hannity said two years ago that Richard Nixon wouldn't have had to resign if he'd had Fox News. Actually, I think Geraldo said it to Sean Hannity and they chuckled. That might be true because this conduct is as um, sort of impeachable looking, if you put it in a time capsule, as Nixon's conduct. But what Nixon didn't have was a, a, an overdrive 
sort of social media we now know aided and embedded by Russian trolls, um, and, and a news network dedicated to amplifying um, what is a very subjective read of, 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 of a report that in the end, if it exonerates them, why are they so upset by all the details? They're not. It was a total, complete vindication victory for President Trump. What, what else do you need to know? It's like watching these people melt down, double down on stupid, the fact that all of their collusion narrative. There is actually a newsbuster piece out today, um, although the Mueller report, uh, no collusion, none whatsoever. This is the fourth report now. We had the FBI investigation. We had the House Intelligence Committee investigation. We had the Bipartisan Senate Committee investigation. No collusion, no conspiracy whatsoever i don't know how many more times people are going to want me to actually read exactly what it says but the report of Mueller, the investigation did not establish members of the trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the russian government in its election interference activities okay but as newsbuster points out you know with all of this liberal talking points went on and on and on they actually pointed out a report that they have that the news networks, broadcast cable, mentioned impeachment an astonishing 309 times during the coverage of the newly released Mueller report. It is insane. They can't help themselves. This, this is, this rage, this psychosis, this mob mentality that they have. Nobody has yet to retract, apologize, um, reevaluate in any way. Russia, 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 collusion, 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 collusion. They don't have the ability to be self reflective, introspective, admit that they're wrong. They're destroying themselves in the process. Our friend Geraldo did tweet out wonder if any of the Democratic candidates will be man or woman enough to apologize for his or her party slandering of at real Donald Trump as a traitor since July of 2016. Geraldo joins us now, as well as Dan Bongino. Uh, thank you both. Uh, Geraldo, I know the answer. No, nobody is going to apologize. Nobody's going no to retract. Nobody is going to, you know, try and repair the, the damage of lying and conspiracy theories. They're not going to do it. That's why the pressure has to stay on to find the roots of the counterintelligence probe find out how the FISA warrants were obtained who initiated this who kept this thing simmering during the last months of the Obama administration a good offense is the best defense that's the way to do it well we're not stopping I mean there's so much coming Dan Mangino you and I we've discussed it I've discussed it on this program yeah. on television over and over yeah. it, it, there is about to be an avalanche of evidence and information that is going to overwhelm the entire country those that have open minds anyway and prove how great a conspiracy theory and how great a lie the a narrative they have fed us and how Yo, people right, will be Sean. held accountable and on that media front you know, yeah, they won't apologize, Sean, because, you, you know, I know you know this as well. A lot of these media figures were actual co-conspirators in this thing. Of course, they're, they're, they're going to go down with this ship. But on that front, yes, there are still big un uh, un unanswered questions out there. Who was Mr. Sood working for? Uh, was he working for the Russians or was he working for Western Intel? Uh, who exactly were the private contractors? Those are big questions. What happened with Ukraine? How much information was passed? Uh, from Ukraine to Democrats and trying to attack Donald Trump. These are all open questions. And now that the tides have turned and the spying scandal is back in the uh, is, is back in the headlights here, you're going to see, I think, Democrats starting to scatter a little bit as the truth comes out. Well, this is what we got, Geraldo. We got 53 more transcripts of closed door testimony. We've got Attorney General Barr now opening an investigation, openly saying spying occurred on the Trump campaign, and he's going to investigate the investigators. That is going to be huge. He seems pretty determined to me. That's why the media is going after him so hard. Then we got the Horowitz report, which we're now told today, in fact, if people would just pay attention, even the Politico is, has acknowledged it, the first preview of this and he's looking very closely at the veracity of the information that Steele provided the Clinton campaign and who knew what, when, and how did they use an unverifiable document full of Russian lies that Hillary paid for? How did they commit fraud after fraud after fraud on the FISA court to spy on the Trump campaign and deny Carter Page his constitutional rights? 
How did they pay Christopher Steele 11 times? Who authorized those payments <laughs> by the FBI to Christopher Steele? At what did they lose faith in what Christopher Steele was reporting? Did they even believe the fake dossier? Uh, you know, I, I think that these are key questions. Was this a, a spite operation directed by the political side of the Obama administration? Well, wait a minute, Geraldo, if, you put, in a, if you put evidence in a FISA application, Rod, I have Rod Rosenstein explaining the whole process. You are, you are a career law enforcement guy, and you are swearing to the best of your ability. It's true. That would mean that they have to have some verification corroboration before it could be used they also put an asterisk instead of saying clinton paid for it which they knew according to bruce Orr, he told them in august of 2016 they they didn't tell the court that that's a fraud on the court now if i commit I a fraud it, on the court what you can't get me out of jail you have to keep the pressure on every one of these anomalies has to be stressed now we have to make sure that the focus remains on the headline the headline is Prosecutors concluded that no one colluded with the Russians to violate U.S. law. So what the hell was this about? Why was the country, why was the president subjected to this torture for two years? They found no collusion. That should be the biggest headline. Instead, they get beat up. They are revealed to be absolutely false in their responses, in their allegations, and so forth. And they are allowed to go on to the minutia now of uh, obstruction. Now, okay, no collusion. Forget about collusion. Now I'm only interested right, in There are three main areas of investigation here. Number one, it's absolutely proof positive that Hillary Clinton violated the Espionage Act many times. The evidence is overwhelming, incontrovertible, irrefutable. And we do know that they rigged her investigation. Even Struck and Page were laughing about it. The funny part is, now that we know because of their closed-door testimony, that it, it started right in Loretta Lynch's office. So if we're going to have equal justice under the law and an equal application of our laws, that and, of course, a real obstruction case that was that had real intent where real crime was committed, the Espionage Act, the intent to destroy the evidence with the hard line server and, and deletions and and bleach but etc so we have that then we have how they used the phony dossier to spy on the trump campaign along with three spies that were recruited by stefan or stefan halper recruited to go after papadopoulos carter page and sam clovis but getting in the back door of the trump campaign through the fisa warrant lie and fraud well that's another big issue and then the third thing is how dan bongino how they tried to bludgeon the president with the phony russian clinton paid for dossier and they, that was their insurance policy, just in case he won, that they would unseat a, a duly elected president. Yeah, let me add another one onto that, Sean. Um, how did Andrew Weissman get appointed to the special counsel of all the lawyers in America? Why did Bob Mueller choose Andrew Weissman, who, as your audience probably has already heard, was briefed in 2016, a year before Mueller's hired, about the dossier and its political origins. So in other words, you have a guy investigating Trump, charged with investigating Trump with a terrible legal reputation, Andrew Weissman, who's appointed by Mueller. All the lawyers, he picks him. And this is the one guy who's already been briefed that the dossier is a pile of horse garbage. You know what I'm talking about. Why did that happen? Those are interesting questions there. And one more thing, the Woods procedure, where they, have to, where they have to actually sign off on the verification of the dossier. People sign their names to that Woods file, the file that indicates it was verified. Who were the people who signed it? Because, Sean, it wasn't verified. It was garbage the whole time. It's obvious. Well, it is garbage the whole time. You know, Geraldo, I mean, all of this, then you watch the media trying. They, how is it that they can't acknowledge even the smallest mistake, the big mistakes here? How do they just justify who they are what they do how do they call it news because how are they... they are crusaders sean they they aren't there to be fact-based and be uh, fair and balanced if i can use that expression they are there with a with a had a goal uh, once the president was elected the goal was to disenfranchise uh, all the people who voted for him the goal was to make him an illegitimate president the goal was and listen what Barr said so emotionally, and I was so impressed with him yesterday, that I, that really struck me, was when he said, look at the president. He's in his first two years in office, and he knows that the place is rotten with the uh, 
spies and backstabbers. He knows that people are, are turning on him. He knows that uh, uh, someone that he has no control over uh, and who has uh, really become a, a force, uh, a, a self-affirming force in the special counsel, that they are rummaging 19 lawyers, uh, 40 FBI agents, uh, uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, thousands of subpoenas. He knows what's going on. The, the miracle, Sean, and this is where I credit you. And I, I know you played that fight uh, earlier about my saying if you existed uh, during the Nixon administration, he, the 37th president would never have been forced to resign. I believe that. You are the shield. You and your listeners are the power that did not exist or was not organized enough uh, back in the early 70s. Uh, now we have a situation where it's a fair fight, where the president has allies, where the president's story, despite the mainstream media, will get out. And I think that that... Let me, let me just say one thing. I don't believe in that credit. We did stay on the story, but there's an ensemble cast that was a part of this, including... Behind the scenes, my my radio team, my television team, uh, Geraldo, you're included in this. You had an well, open I, mind. I, I, you know, people I'm need proud, to go you back. Know I, you know, I love you. And uh, we're, we're you all too, we're all brother. spokes in a wheel, and we need every spoke for the wheel to go round. And I'm going to tell you, there was maybe 30 of us in the country, maybe, and that included like Jordan and Meadows and Nunes. It wasn't a lot. There, and this is the scary part that we only wanted the truth, and it was out there. Because I believe this is the biggest abuse of power, corruption scandal in history. This was an attempted coup. It this really was an was. attempt to rig an election. This was an attempt to, in so many ways, this is so dangerous if we want to survive as a country. Well, I think it was an attempted coup. I think that, uh, you know, to have a coup, you don't have to, uh, you know, have, I, I believe that there were moments. I just want to correct myself. I believe that there were moments in this process uh, with Rod Rosenstein and, and some of the others where they actively discuss the 25th Amendment, overthrowing the president by having him declared uh, incompetent. And, and uh, spying on him and, 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 and secretly spying way, on him. Six ways and on Ivanka, putting pressure on, the, on the Don Jr., on, on the entire family, on the whole Trump organization, going after everybody. Imagine, I mean... Sean, if you weren't the rock of stability there, I mean, the president watched Michael Cohen uh, dissolve into uh, his an, an arch enemy, uh, a guy that was his conciliary, was his attorney, was his All long right, you're, pal. you're raising a, a great question. We're going to get to it on the other side of the break. Geraldo Dambongino with us. Hey, listen, I will tell you that my pillow changed my life. It just works. I love it. I can't be without it. I fall asleep faster. I, I stay asleep longer. Now, my pillow has outdone themselves. They have taken what they do for your head and your neck and sleeping, and they've added to your entire sleep experience by creating the My Pillow mattress topper. You put it on top of your mattress, and it is like you are sleeping on a cloud. It's My Pillow for your whole body. It's amazing. You get My Pillow foam for support that you need. It has transitional foam to help uh, relieve pressure points. It's ultra soft patented temperature regulating cover and it has a 10-year warranty and a cover that's washable dryable made in the u.s backed by mike 60-day unconditional money-back guarantee in other words my pillow for the whole body all the support and the better sleep you want and deserve right now if you go to mypillow.com or call 800-919-6090 get the my pillow mattress topper Mentioning my name, Hannity, you save 30% and you get two standard my pillows absolutely free. That's mypillow.com, promo code Hannity. You will love sleeping on a cloud like I do. Are you sick of fake news? Well, we've got you covered. Hannity watches here and has the news you need. Which song? All right, who do you like the best in in that run, uh, Linda? Because you're like big and you know, rich. All right, Linda's hands up in the air. Well, so, let me let me just say this because I'm friends with all of them, and I all of them, and I love Charlie Daniels, and I love. You, every, you're picking favorites. It's like having three kids, and you pick your favorite kid. Yeah, you you always have a favorite, but you just don't tell them the other one who the favorite is, or you tell oh, them all I, they're the favorite. That's not true. I do not favor one kid over the other. Of course you do. You like certain things about MK better than you like things about Patrick, and vice versa. No, no, no. It doesn't matter. I love them equally. I really do. They both have that special place in my heart, period, end of sentence. That's it. That's it. 
I think that's a really good answer. No, it's not a politically correct. It's the truth. Uh, of the... course not. No. Oh my gosh! All right, Geets, <laughs> whatever. All right, what were you gonna say? No, I mean I love Big and Rich. I mean once I saw them in concert, you know I've never seen Charlie Daniels in concert except for the one time he played on the Freedom concert. But I mean I, you know, being at with you know John. That Rich. was the day I literally walked over. So we're at Big and Rich's bar, the Redneck Riviera in Vegas. Las Vegas, yeah. Okay, and. Then I look at Linda. She's out on the dance floor and she's dancing. This is such alone. fake news. You're dancing. I'm not alone. dancing. And I walked alone. over to you and I said, "This looks really weird. Can you stop?" Oh, you look really weird. I you're did the not only look really weird. I didn't try to embarrass you in front of everybody. But you're there, uh, you know. Oh like, no, I of mean, course not. You I just mean, stood like, on the sidelines, you pointing are and laughing. shaking it and shaking it, and it's like, okay, who's this crazy lady out there that's dancing by herself? First of all, I was not by myself. I was with hundreds of other people that were attending the bar and watching them play, and they were amazing. And as I recall, when John was here, John took my side and said that I wasn't alone, and I was perfectly normal to dance with okay. a bunch of other people. Then we that had were another dancing. dancing incident, and this was, I believe, was it Helsinki? Incident? It's an incident. It's an incident. <laughs> well, it, but look, we had our whole team. I, I had both my brother-in-laws there. Uh, you were there. Uh, Kristen was there. I don't remember. I can't name everybody. Anyway, it was a team effort. We all went team out. effort. So I'm standing next to Blair and James, and because I had mostly when I go out take go out take my team out, I'm the one that goes to get the drinks. I like to do everything. We, you know, when we, I just like to be like um, the flight attendant when we're out of place. I want to make sure everyone has a good time. I used to do it. I like it. And sometimes I even get behind the bar and I'll make the drinks for everybody if I can talk the owner into it. So long story short, so. Me and Blair are looking at each other. There's some creepy guy that goes up to you and J me and James. James were like, what is this? And he's like getting in and starts touching, all, wait, starts touching you guys to try to dance with you all. And I'm like getting freaked out, angry, mad. So finally, yeah. I just said, I'm going to handle this. I walked over. I did a little jujitsu on his shoulder. Very, It was a move that put him in a lot of pain very quickly. And he and by the way, he flew away. He was gone. Like if you were in the center, he was in a corner somewhere dancing. Yeah, by he himself. followed me to the bathroom and we talked about it. And he said to me, he goes, Why is that man so mad at me for trying to dance with you? And I said, Well, that's my dad. And he's oh. just you know, <laughs> Wow. Did you really I you didn't I never heard that part of the story. And I, and by the way, it, it, Tim agreed. James agreed. Blair agreed. Yeah, because you're all, all like big brothers and uncles. Okay, first of all, we think it's weird. It's a circle of girls. Sarah Carter was there. You're all dancing together. And we're like looking at, this is so weird. But, you know, go, you guys have a good time. I would never go out on any dance floor of my life dependent on it. And But then this guy, like, throws himself in the middle and tries to, like, grind up against you people. Yeah, I'm like, it's, whoa. It's, it's the Th mating That's not call. happening with me watching. Did it or did it not happen, as it I happened, described? As it you did. Described it, yes. Well, why does a stranger feel he has the right to step in the middle of a group of girls and get that familiar that fast? I don't know. I mean, listen, you haven't been out enough, clearly, because this is. I don't go. Normal. I never go to a place like that. It just so happened it was a restaurant that had this dance bar area, and you guys wanted to go to the dance bar area after we ate. Ethan makes a very good point. I mean, I've gotten just as much uh, up close grinding on the New York subway, so I think I'm just better prepared for these moments okay well i did my job and i whispered to blair now i think i sold sweet baby i said i'll handle this well you know the better way to handle it and to avoid these moments would have been to get on the dance floor and shake what your mama gave you but okay you just that is never going to happen what and i'm supposed to out dance you, him and that, James, then he'll, then yeah, he'll be intimidated by my dancing skills and he'll walk away it's a much oh, more all peaceful I did was, let's way. just say i put my hand on his shoulder in a way that got his attention and i got his attention and i pulled him back and i said you better stop now. He was a very sweet guy. Before I left that I night, said, he took a picture with me. Poor kid. Uh, he was an older man. What do you mean, kid? You These know, are old people in this place. He wasn't old. He wasn't that old. Okay, like 45, 50. No, he was like yeah, 35. Yeah, he was that old. It was creepy. It was Did like you Uncle just Joe. Call 45. Sweet old. baby James. It was right. creepy. It was. I felt like I had to do something. Right? That, and, yeah, well, you know, sweet I said baby's to my the uncle. Last you're thing my I said dad. to James, I said, listen, just watch my back. And meaning I'm going to go over and do something. And he, he's, James does what he always did. He started to creep in 
And if anything happened, I knew he had my back. Blair was there. I knew he had my back, although Blair couldn't fight his way out of a wet paper bag. No, that's not true. It's so true. He's a triathlete. You know, what does he do? Those super marathons? What do you call those things? Iron Man. Iron Man. Okay. He couldn't find himself out of a wet paper bag. Strong. You know, he's fit as can be. We love him. But, you know, if it's a street fight, I want James. That's all there is to it. Right, James? Right. and, And, you know, by the way, how effective was I? I was so You were good. very effective. That how, was the end of my dancing partner. F- how far did he move away from you guys from that moment forward? It was I mean, quarter- far until he followed me to the bathroom, yeah. Well, you'd, I, he's lucky I didn't know that part. It was very nice. All right, stop. That's not nice. It's creepy. You don't have the right. It's just like the creepy kisses of Joe Biden. You Crazy, creepy Uncle Joe. I'm sorry. You don't invade a stranger's space and start grinding with them. Well, I mean, after he announces next week, he's going to invade all our space. Oh, you mean Uncle Joe? Yeah, Uncle, Uncle Joe's Joe? announcing next week. Did you hear? Yeah, we know that. Yes. We're very excited. All right. Well, you know what? Let me check out on our line here. Let me do a quick survey. All right. Rob in Cleveland, do you agree with me that that's creepy on the dance floor? Well, um, I, I do think it is to a certain extent, but who are we to judge? I mean, most guys are pretty creepy. Um, okay, what if I it really- was one of your employees or a group of your employees dancing and this guy gets up close and starts grinding with, with these people? I, I would have I done something very similar, and I'm on the opposite side of the spectrum with you when it comes to political. All right, stay right there. You're a liberal. We'll get back to you. Tom in Chicago, what would you do? I'd stay off the dance floor. If she wants to dance, let her dance. So I should just ignore the creepy guy? That's right. Oh Thank you, gosh. Tom. Uh, Matt in New York, what do you think? Yeah, Sean, I'm going to agree with you, but I do sympathize with Linda, uh, oh. given the fact that I do, do live, I do live in the city, and I have been on the 6th train at 8 a.m. Thank you, well, Matt. Well, that's a different story. You can't dance your way to any other place. It's like a, you pack like a sardine. Hang on there. Steve in San Diego, what do you say? Yeah, I'm uh, standing back until Linda gives me the look, and then I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Oh, that's funny. Scott in Milwaukee, what do you say? Uh, my guess is I'm going to wait till I get the wrong look, and then I'm out of there. <laughs> oh, then you're out there. And then, by the way, I was nice about it. You know, I just said. Yeah, you just um, squeezed his shoulder until he couldn't move his arm. No, yeah. what I and he felt it, and I'm like, okay, knock it off. That's it. Stand down. And then he, he went away. All right, Rob the Liberal. What's up, Rob? How are you? I'm well. Listen, uh, I just want to let you know I, I'm, uh, I'm, I definitely am a liberal, and um, I like to listen to a lot of different conservative radio hosts and stuff like that. So um, I don't want you to think I'm you know, bashing you or anything in particular. But uh, listen, I do- I can, I've been I'm at this 30 years. You're not the first. Go ahead. <laughs> um, my, my question is, everything that's going on, you were talking about earlier with you know, the Hillary, Hillary Clinton you know, um, situation and you know, everything Barack Obama has done. I want to know, do you have any um, insight on things that the conservatives or Republicans have done that has yeah, maybe... Yeah, I, I, if you listen to my program more regularly, you know I have nothing but contempt for how weak the majority of Republicans are. I mean, I'm I'm angry that they made a promise for seven years and had 65 show votes about repealing and replacing Obamacare, and uh, about a hundred of them bailed when they had a real opportunity to do it. I'm angry at the you know Republican senators that said they they voted in 2015 to repeal when it wouldn't count Obamacare, and then the same bill in 2017. You know, seven of them changed their votes. You know, and I, I, you know, I'm, I, I can't stand that they care more about their power or perceived power and getting reelected than they do serving the American people and fighting for the promises they make. That's why I love the Freedom Caucus so much. You know, you ask me who I like in Congress. I like Meadows, Jordan and, and, and his team. Um, there's a few senators I like. Um, I do like Ted Cruz. I like, uh, Senator Rand Paul, uh, I, although we disagree on some issues. He's a great civil libertarian. Um, there are a few people I like. The only thing McConnell does well, it seems, are justices. That's it. Um, he pisses me off more than he, than I can praise him. I mean, I like, I'm a conservative. I like the tax cuts of the president, the judicial choices that he promised. I like him fighting to secure the borders. I like the economic growth by ending burdensome regulation and giving us the biggest tax cut in history. I like that he takes on little rocket man and everybody freaks out. I like that he got out of the Iranian deal. You know, all this talk about Russia, there's been no president in 20 years as tough as Donald Trump on Russia. It's such a joke. 
So I'm a conservative. I'm not a Republican. And I can't stand that they don't fight for what they promise. I hate it. Uh, Tom Chicago. What's up, Tom? How are you? Hey, thank you. Uh, I just you keep mentioning the gang of eight and the 302s. And mm-hmm. I wish you could explain that a little bit further so I have more information regarding what those issues are. I'll tell you what. I can put it up on our site Monday, but I'll give you the short version of a 302. That, that, let's say um, in the case of Bruce Orr and Christopher Steele, their conversations, all of those are recorded. And so there are real conversations in real time. And what my sources have been saying for a long time is when we get the FBI 302s, which is just a form number. In other words, the descriptions of contacts and phone calls between the very key individual people that we've been following they will be extraordinarily revealing. Um, there's also a question as to, you know, when, uh, you know, as it relates to certain items, why certain 302s were filled out months later, and was there an original copy that was then changed out for a newer copy so it would make them look good? Gang of Eight is a certain group of Republicans, and it was information very damning, to the upper echelon FBI people that we said that would expose that they even knew about their own corruption and they have been desperately fighting, and DOJ people, desperately fighting to prevent that from becoming public. Does that help? That's a short version. Does that help? No, that's that's great. I will get to the website and get further yeah. information. That's and the it. FISA Thank applications you. will come too. There's a, uh, there's a lot, and they're going to be very revealing and revealing in the sense that everything we've been telling you for two-plus years is true. All right, quick break. We'll come back on the other side. Listen, I want to remind you, too, about Car Shield. Look, when it comes to costly repairs, uh, you need options. You know, often you're stuck bargain hunting for the best deal because, what, it's a thousand, two thousand dollars That's a lot of money. And uh, then you're going for the cheapest fix. Well, you can't put a price on your family's safety and security on the road. And that's why I have, and you really need to get, extended vehicle protection from Car Shield. And the great news is CarShield, they're going to make the process. If your car has an expensive repair, they will make it super easy. They'll cover the repair. You pick either your favorite mechanic. You pick the dealership. It's all your choice. They provide 24-hour roadside assistance and a rental car while your car is being fixed for free. And it doesn't matter how many miles you have on your car. Maybe 5,000 miles. Maybe 150,000 miles. Doesn't mean you have to pay high repair bills. Car Shield administrators, they've already paid out close to $2 billion in claims, and they want to help you. So, you know what? Protect your family. Protect your bank account. Get the smart insurance for your car and extended coverage, vehicle coverage like I have, and protection. And call their new number. It's 800-CAR-6000. 800-CAR-6000. And mention the name Hannity or visit carshield.com and mention my name Hannity. You'll save 10%. All right, carshield.com, 800 car 6000. And by the way, promo code Hannity saves you money. I hope everybody has a great Passover and a great uh, Easter Sunday and Holy Friday, Holy Saturday. And uh, you know what? We do need to reflect and thank God for all the blessings in our life. We'll continue. stories of the day with solutions to help move america forward this is the sean hannity show The special counsel confirmed that the Russian government sponsored efforts to illegally interfere with the 2016 presidential election, but did not find that the Trump campaign or other Americans colluded in those efforts. I'm having a good day, too. It was called No Collusion, No Obstruction. There never was, by the way, and there never will be. Freedom is back in style. Welcome to the revolution. Yeah, we're coming to your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country song. Sean Hannity. The new Sean Hannity Show. More me. 
behind-the-scenes information on breaking news and more bold, inspired solutions for America. All right, glad you're with us. Happy Friday, happy Passover, happy Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and happy Easter Sunday. We have so much, all of us, to be thankful for. The greatest, freest, best country God has ever given man, a country that has accumulated more power than any other country in the history of mankind and abused it less and advanced the human condition all over the world more. The United States of America, there's one blessing. That's why all of this that we've been dealing with, all that is about to come, is so important. We've never been a perfect country, no. But in their wisdom, our framers, our founders, they they created a system of governance. And remember, government in its best state is but a necessary evil, and its worst state an intolerable one. That was Thomas Paine. He also said, were the guides and dictates of conscience irresistibly obeyed, Conscience meaning defined as God telling us right and wrong in our hearts, and we all are fail- failures in that respect. Um, there would be no need for government, but that not being the case, we've got the best system. And it keeps getting threatened by very powerful people. That's what this is all about. Forget, listen, people have been writing me, telling me, you know, a lot of things, some favorable too. I mean, Thank you for staying on this for two years. Thank you for the team that you put together that have, have, that is that maybe third, 25, 30 of us, including my TV and radio staff that, that you know radio more than TV, the names that we talk about every day and the ones that jump in and interrupt me all the time here on my own show and don't even ask permission to put on a mic every once in a while. Um, but I'm just t- teasing, but there's maybe 25 or 30 of us. The rest of the corrupt media, they were in unison in what is the biggest lie ever told, groupthink lie. And it was a coordination with a a Democratic Party apparatus, if you will, or apparatchik, whatever you prefer, and a media that is compliant and in unison with their message and has a political agenda and they share one common trait a psychotic rage and hatred of all things donald trump that means donald trump all his family all that he stands for anybody that likes him remember we're the smelly walmart people those of us that like trump we're the ones that, oh, I can smell them. The, the Walmart, to get smelly Walmart Trump voters. We are, in their private moments, we're, we're looked down on. You know, the people that, who are the people that really make this country great? It's we the people. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. Everybody I know gets up, out of bed, they serve other people. You know, and in the process, they get to make some money so that they can buy a house and a car and or get an apartment, or whatever you're doing. You know, every business is either you're producing goods or services for other people, like a mailman. A mailman, I, I love my mailman. I love my UPS driver. I get to, I love my FedEx driver. I get to know these guys. They're great guys. And every day, they got to work their ass off. They like being monitored and gps around their route every day. And God forbid they stop for lunch 10 seconds longer than they should. They're getting trouble. It's ridiculous. And... All, you know, if you go to a, a restaurant, think of all the people that that are behind the scenes to get that meal to you and your family or friends or wherever you happen to be hanging out with. I mean, first you got, you know, you got the cooks, you got the waiter, you got the busboys, you got the bartenders, you got, you know, all these people serving you. But then you hopefully leave them a good tip and they get to they get paid for what they do. And you have a great meal and you have a good time and the good restaurants will stay in business and the bad ones will go out of business. And but that that's what life is. And it's just when you see that ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the media went hook, line and sinker into lying daily with anonymous sources, breathless hysteria, hyperventilating fake news, conspiracy TV, and the the noise continues. 
It's not like they're going out there today or yesterday and saying, wow, every time we said Russia, 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 Trump, Russia, Russia, Trump, 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 collusion, collusion, collusion. You know, you might think at some point they say, um, uh oh, we might have gotten this all wrong. We might. Uh, well, hmm. Uh, well, let's talk about the Steele dossier. You know, what they have done here is irreparable harm. To the country and to themselves, their inability to retract, to apologize, to their their inability of any self-reflection or introspection. You know, I've, I was raised Catholic, so I was talking about I'm Catholic. I feel guilty over everything. If I have bad thoughts, I feel guilty. And, you know, it's it's just one of those things. But I've never looked at that guilt as necessarily a bad thing, because often it informs me that maybe I'm wrong. The hardest words for people to say is, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. And that's a big part of life. But we're imperfect people. That's just who we are. But, the you know, we have major components here. Because what happened puts this great democratic republic, this constitutional republic in jeopardy. These are not words that I came up with for the sake of, of speaking them When we talk about a dual justice system, an equal justice under the law, an equal application of our laws. If you really want to sum it up into different phases, you know, you have one phase where you have a favored candidate that committed felonies, violated the Espionage Act. There's no debate any longer. The evidence is there, overwhelming, incontrovertible irrefutable evidence that Hillary Clinton had top secret classified information on a private email server and likely hacked by six foreign intelligence services. But that's a different story. They're probably one of them, Russia, probably another one, North Korea, probably another one, China, probably another one, Japan. And God knows how many others. That's why you don't put it there. And then, you know, you had a group of people that favored her. Even the person interviewing her thinks that she should win a 100 million to zero and said so. And still got to interview her and was writing her exoneration in May of 2016 before the interview of her and 17 other key witnesses and actually allowed in the interview Hillary to bring two other people in. You think that would be afforded to General Flynn, who both McCabe and Comey bragged about setting up the deputy FBI director? I told him he doesn't need a lawyer. And Comey saying, oh, sure, I I wouldn't do this in the Obama administration or the Bush administration. I took full advantage of the chaos on day four of the Trump administration. Okay, that's how we treat 33-year veterans to our country? And then and then create a perjury trap? And then even after they find out, the FBI agent still didn't think he lied. But because he has no more money, because he worked in the for the military, not in the pub, uh, private sector where he'd make a lot more money, Then they're like throwing the book. Well, either you sign this that you lied to the FBI or and you cooperate with us so we can put the screws to you so that you'll sing or compose. uh, Or we're going to have you were in business with your son. We're going to begin our investigation into your family. What what father and husband's not going to say, screw it, just dive on the sword. I'll go to jail. I'm not going to let that happen to my family. And now he's millions of dollars in debt and he's still facing sentencing. But the three components are what they are. You've got a rigged investigation by biased people that abuse their power. And then you've got everybody knew. Bruce Orr testified to it in August of 2016, including the pit bull of Robert Mueller's team. They knew that, in fact, Hillary bought the uh, irony of all ironies bought and paid for a Russian dossier with money she funneled from a law firm to an op research firm to hire a foreign national who's not supposed to influence our elections, that that foreign national we knew in August of 2016, according to Bruce Orr, hated Trump, had an agenda. Hillary bought and paid for it, the opposition party. And it can't be verified because even its own author, under oath, in an interrogatory, said, I have no idea if it's true. 
So you rig Hillary's investigation. She gets to remain in the race, the favored candidate over the, you know, the, the candidate that you lose 100 million to zero. That is a loathsome human being, according to Struck and Page. Please tell me he's not going to win. And then, well, if he does, we have an insurance policy. Then to then we have the outright spying of the Trump campaign. Stefan Hap, Halper is tasked to spy on Carter Page, George Papadopoulos, and also Sam Clovis. Then they lie to a FISA court. They didn't tell the FISA court Christopher Steele hates Trump. They didn't tell the FISA court Hillary paid for it. They just had an asterisk saying it might have slight political taint. That's not that's not being that's that's lying by omission to a court. That is an outright fraud to a court. They didn't tell the court that it was unverified. We now know it's unverifiable. Even Steele doesn't believe in his own dossier. And then they use that to spy. Once you got into Carter Page's old emails, you were in the whole you were in the whole you were in all of Trump world at that point. And then that information from that phony dossier was leaked. Harry Reid got some. Let's see. Uh, Michael Isikoff, uh, David Korn, the Washington Post. Well, where did they get the dossier information from? When, why was it disseminated? Well, they got it from the deep state. We believe probably Clapper or Brennan. Maybe Brennan more than Clapper. And it needs to be investigated. And they, they wrote about it. Hookers, Ritz Carlton, Moscow, peeing on Donald Trump's bed. Not true, but people heard it. It went pretty viral before the election. Why? To impact the election. And then it's used to to influence the election. And then lo and behold, they lose. They didn't think that was nobody expected that part. And then when they lose, well that's all right, because now they've got the insurance policy. James Comey signed that first FISA application that was a fraud before the court in October of 2016 before the election. Then he heads on up to Trump Tower when it's President-elect Trump and pulls him aside and says, yeah, just so you know, there's this dossier out there. It's salacious, but it's not verified. Well, that's not what he was saying to the FISA court three months prior. So either he lied in October of 2016 or was lying in January of 2017. And then the whole lead up, we have three invest, four investigations, no collusion. You know, how many more times do I need to read from the Mueller report before it is etched in the brain of these fake news, lying conspiracy theorists in the media that the investigation did not establish members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in its ele- election interference activities? And they every time they said it, they were lying. Every every anonymous source, they were breathlessly, you know, hyperventilating on the air, breathlessly reporting fake news, lies, conspiracies, and no reflection today. Later on, we have Geraldo on. Well, we also have Sidney Powell, Peter Schweitzer. John Solomon's got a lot of news of what's coming. We're going to get into that, too. Yeah, Geraldo wonders if if there's any Democratic candidate that's going to apologize. Uh, the answer is no, Geraldo. We'll have you on in a little bit to talk about it. It's not going to happen. All right, let me tell you about Blinds.com. We have a lot to get to today. Happy Friday. The only thing I'm going to say to you one last thing before we go to break. Don't listen to the noise anymore. They're just doubling down on stupid. They have forever been exposed for who they are. And they are about to be hit with the biggest avalanche tsunami of truth that proves that they are liars and have been from the beginning and conspiracy theorists that nobody will ever trust them again nor should they there's a reason why we've been right and they've been wrong and i'm not taking the credit this is an ensemble cast of very brave people that we've all worked really hard to get to truth and we got there and believe me you think a lot of these people like us? No. They want us want to take us all out.
Thank you.